Okay, it's Easter weekend and uh, I previously posted a video showing the new gauges, Smith's instruments, that have come back from Speedy Cables, fully refurbished. Um, I just thought I'd show you what the current setup looks like before I replace it. So on the left is a Smith's tachometer from, I think, a Triumph, probably a Dolomite which works okay, but it's a bit juddery, so the, the needle does bounce around a bit. Uh, the Jaeger instrument on the right also works fine, um, but it's not the correct one. So I'm going to replace that. Um, I just thought I'd show you what the startup sequence is like, because it's probably a bit longer than some other road cars. So you'll see immediate glance, you'll see above the radio or in-car entertainment centre, as I think they're now called. Um, two extra gauges, there's a voltmeter, a Smith's voltmeter, which gives me extra reassurance that the charging system is working or not working. In between them is an MGB heater knob single single rotary which was typical on the series 3 vixen whereas the previous cars had uh, separate ones uh, and then to the right of the heat and rotary is uh, another temperature gauge another smith's temperature gauge this is in fact for the oil cooler so when i was competing with this car um, it was an idea to keep an eye on the oil temperature and make sure it wasn't cooking the three switches to the right of the oil temperature gauge. The first one is a electric fuel pump switch. Then we have a switch for the heater, sorry, for the fan, the Kenlo fan on the radiator, on the main radiator. And then finally there's a a switch which does quite an odd function which is to turn the telltale indicators for the left and right side into a hazard warning so if i'm indicating right or left and operate this switch the indicators become uh, a hazard warning okay um what i'll do now is just show you with the sequence for starting so let's assume i'm in the vehicle which i am we remove the cover for the battery master switch. Put the battery master switch to on. And then, and I have a battery master switch for peace of mind so I can disengage all the electrics at one fell swoop. There is one exception. There is a separate circuit outside of the master switch for the interior light and also for the alarm circuit if there was one fitted. Okay, so we've got the ignition barrel. This has a two position for turning things on without the ignition circuit. So that's this, and you'll see that the fuel gauge lights up and comes on. Uh, back to the center. Now we turn on the switch to the centre and you'll see the telltales come on for the uh, oil pressure and for the ignition warning circuit. So that's now ignition on. Uh, so what we need to do now is turn on the fuel pump and you can probably hear the fuel pump coming on and pressuring up. The fuel pump is rear mounted uh, on top of the space frame, but below the GRP of the body shell. And it's sound insulated, or should be, but you can obviously still hear it while it's aerating. Uh, it's a facet red top pump, so it's got more than enough capacity for the single Weber 3236 DGV carburetor. But the reason I've got that pump is this car also runs Delorto 
twin Delorto 45 DHLAs and also Weber 40 DCOEs, but they're not currently fitted. Okay, so we'll take it out of gear. We'll pull out the choke, since this is a manual choke carburetor. We'll give it a few, probably can't see that very well. Give it say three or four pumps of the throttle. And then we'll fire up the engine start, which is, I could start it on the key, but I'll start it on this separate button starter. Okay, so that's the normal starting sequence and you would leave the choke on until the idle had become smoother and then push the choke back and the engine should run pretty smoothly at say uh, a thousand rpm okay i hope that was useful